Hello again. It's good to see you again. Well, a lot of viewers, a lot of friends asking me. I do review a lot of holding bike. Do I hold a road bike or do I ride a road bike? The answer is of course. Yes, actually, uh, I start my experience in biking is uh, by mountain biker as a mountain biker. So I get used to it with a flat bar instead of a drop bar. But one by one, my friends switch to road bikes, so uh, I have to be with them, mingle with them, and uh, they ask me to build a road bike. So it comes to a question from uh, most of my friends that uh, what kind of road bike that they have to build, whether it has to be an expensive road bike or not, what kind of criteria. Before I can explain that, I would like to introduce my own road bike, my first build road bike here which is, uh, I did it uh, some time ago. So, uh, I choose this uh, specialized uh, S-Walk Tarmac uh, SL6. It is the, the latest uh, uh, model of the S-Walk at the time. Now we have an XL7, but I still prefer this, uh, this model. Uh, it comes to a beautiful printed uh, color. It's something it's not uh, very uh, used to. I mean that people will take a look and then will be, wow, what kind of uh, bike is this? So you see that uh, the point if you do the road bike is you, uh, if you ride alone, solo rider, you don't have to have a beautiful, I mean that you can use another some common road bike, but if you do uh, uh, a bike together, ride together with the friends or the group, you have to catch their speed. This is the most important because if you cannot catch the speed, then you'll be left behind, and then of course you cannot mingle. So uh, I get used to it uh, with the mountain bike, which is uh, 25 kilometers per hour speed, and then. To, uh, if the road bike, you have to uh, catch 30 to 35 km per hour. So my first concern is that it has to be a lightweight because uh, I get used to 25 and now I change to 35, then the bike should be lightweight. So when I choose, why I choose this airport because lightweight, the most important. Compared to the, uh, the cheaper for versions, this uh, carbon is uh, much better. Uh, quality then uh, of course it has to be, to be stronger because anyway we have to care about the safety too so after I got the frame the the next is uh, I have to choose the group set so come you see uh, it come to the conclusion it come to the decision to choose the SRAM RED AXS which uh, come with the 12 speed 10, uh, 33, and then uh, I like this uh, chain model. You see that the chain model is so masculine. It's not like a uh, common one, which is like a uh, uh, eight number shape, but it's uh, very masculine. And of course, and this uh, chain ring with uh, 48, 32, T, and then uh, you see, the uh, technology of this group set is it's controlled by remote from here so you see there's no cable at all the communication between this shifter and the FD is through this component which is powered by this battery see it's rechargeable battery you can just open it and then there's a light here so I have a ship see it move if I do shift to the left, then it move. You see, but uh, if I want to change one, so I have to uh, shift these two shifters so they will change to yeah, like that. So it's very leading edge technology, I like it a lot. And then uh, you see that uh, the firmware, there's firmware here, you can update it by using the application. There's a full application by through your mobile. So you can update it with the latest, all the, uh, maybe there's some bugs, something like that. 
So uh, you see that uh, this bike is actually equipped with the uh, uh, ceramic speed button bracket already. You see here. There's a ceramic speed button bracket over here, and then but I cannot use that because uh, if I install this SRAM rat, we have to choose we have to use another ceramic speed type. So uh, it's another another investment, and then. After I got this uh, group set, uh, yes, before I forget, this group set is equipped also with the brake. You see here, this uh, this brake, sixteen, and then uh, control from here. So if you see, there's only two cable here. This cable is only to control this front brake and then the rear brake over here. Yeah, and then after group set. The mainframe, what's next? Of course, my criteria it has to be something. Uh, the friction, the friction has to be less, so it not uh, waste my energy and all out for the movement of this bike. So it come to the choice of a Jeep. This wheel set Jeep NSW. 454 This is one of the top leading edge wheelset technology as well because uh, They equip they have a special technology over here uh, Which is called actual plus something like that uh, They install a magnetic here Basically uh, in short easy terms that through the magnetic it reduced the dragging the friction so when you do the costing, you are not pedaling. This bike is still moving. And then one of the advantage you can check it in the website is that when you approach the corner, sometimes we have stop pedaling. And then after we exit the corner, we have to gain the power, uh, the voltage again, and it reduces a lot of, waste a lot of our power energy. So by this technology, it means that we use less power uh, we can just stop pedaling in the sequence before entering the corner and then after that we can uh, bank the wattage back and then we can uh, achieve the same speed as before. So it's very high leading technology here. They use a magnetic, they use, reduce the dragging, uh, most efficient power over here. So you see these three main components influence the choice of how we build a road bike and then of course uh, the pedal I choose this uh, special edition Tour de France kill blade with the ceramic bearing over here too so reduce friction so lightweight and as low as friction as possible and the handle post handle bar over here also very light from NV and then of course the most important thing is the Garmin bracket over here and then you see it's very simple there's no much accessories oh yeah don't forget the saddle also is carbon there are two types the carbon and the alloy one but I, this is a special one it's uh, from carbon one the mimic and it's a design exactly with my shape of my body so not too big small and then of course people will ask what kind of size that they need of course when you invest an expensive group bike you have to uh, consult with the uh, bike fit consultant so they will measure the geometry and then your body posture and then to suit the exact bike that's suitable with for you so but I think that it's not really a must. I mean that uh, as long as you feel it's convert. For me, I choose a small as as size forty nine, but I have another bike road bike with the M size, which is I feel same convenient, but I feel even more convenient with the M size one rather than the S one. So, to answer the question, do we really need a expensive road bike? The answer is is depend. If affordable, of course, expensive road bike with the all leading edge technology, 
it's so fun. You can use all the latest technology to ease our energy. We can catch up the group with the speed, same speed, and then also uh, it's so fun. And then also, yeah, something attractive to have a photograph with. But it still depend on your capability, on your performance, your stamina, whether you can still have the same performance without an expensive road bike. So if you are just you are an athlete, of course it's much different. So that's all my explanation. I hope that my explanation today can uh, give you a little bit background on how you choose a road bike. I mean that it's not a guarantee that an expensive road bike would make you better performance. It's not a really a guarantee. We still have to practice, you still have to increase your stamina, your heart rate, you have to maintain, and of course, you have to feel fun on the road. And this bike is designed for road, not off road, still remember for that. Well, I hope it's uh, quite interesting, and then uh, please leave your comment on my channel, AT channel, so I can know your opinion, and of course, please subscribe my channel so you can keep updated with my